All right, how's everybody doing? Good, happy Good. New Year. Yeah, you too. Happy New Year. Do you feel that you got some things back on track from last week that now you can go into the playoffs knowing that you won't have your, your full starters playing? I think it was good um, for us to be able to do what we said, which was try to eliminate and reduce um, the penalties, the turnovers. We, we of course, had the, the sack fumble, which was big and, and early in the game. So you, you, you want to make sure um, you reduce those and eliminate them. And we know that, that we, we have to. Um, they ended up getting points from that. And I think the rest of the game there, we were much better with um, the, the penalty part. Uh, we did have the one uh, illegal procedure from empty um, that you'd like to erase. But for the most part, the, the penalties, the turnovers, I thought Patrick did a great job decision making when stuff wasn't there, uh, being smart with what he did with the football. Um, and the other guys rallying around him. We had some explosives too early on in that game. So being able to have, um, you know, I mean, I think we only had 19 or 20 plays in the first half. And then there's a couple red zone plays in there where we'd like to be better. I think that's probably the biggest thing is red zone for sure. Um, but I thought the explosives was good for the guys and for us to be able to get some bigger plays, bigger chunks early on. And it started, unlike the previous week on the first play, this week, this past week, it started with a nine-yard run, and, and I thought that was great. How do you keep the momentum going from that when a lot of the starters are not going to get a lot of playing time? Well, uh, I think that's a really good question. Um, you have to look at it a little two, – two separate ways. I think number one is you, you try to take advantage of this time as a player and a coach, um, of whether it's rest for the players um, and for the coaches, but also – uh, preparation and how you do that. So that's a that's a benefit. Um, it's how you use that time. But then to your point too, you want to make sure that you use what you just did last week and don't lose that. I think um, what we're doing now is with the guys that are playing, we are using that. We are using the fact that, hey, look, when you eliminate penalties, um, when you protect the football, um, we can do some really good things. I think we also know that we can be better in the red zone, um, understanding that, so whether it's a run or pass. So we'll keep it going. Uh, the, uh, I'll just continue to pull back or keep going back to how we handled um, the week last week going into it. And when you finally get that win at the end of the game, you're, you feel good about it, but you also know there's more to come. And you, you don't want to have that deodorize the feeling of, hey, if there are some mistakes here, still we won, but we, we still can get a lot better. You talked about that Pacheco run to start the game. Yeah. He kind of broke that tackle he, he, uh, right near the line of scrimmage. Um, he really gave you guys a lift last week. What, what do you miss when he's not in the lineup? Well, the when you look at what Pops does, I mean, he's, he's first of all, the football player, uh, he's only going to continue to get better and better. He's learning himself. Um, sometimes even patience through the hole, when to hit it uh, with speed, when to be patient, let it, let it develop. The tempo of that, he's going to continue to grow. But the one thing he does is go 100 miles per hour 100% of the time. Um, we feed off of that. He's a young kid that's a, a great personality that all he wants to do is win. And, you know, every team usually has one or two guys on the team that's uh, over the top with the excitement and in a good way, and he's our guy with that. So having a young guy like that that brings the juice, not just in, on game day, but in the practice, after meetings, um, you know, he 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 uh, he's always positive, and I just appreciate that about him. This was the best deep ball game for Pat in, in a while. Do you sense that that being maybe a breakthrough sign of things to come, or more so isolated like laps in some of the Bengals coverages? Um, no, well, I mean, there was – obviously, we're well aware of the one breakdown that they had, uh, and that's a part of the game. There's probably a lot more breakdowns that go on on defense where things like that happen, maybe not as aggressive. Um, uh, but, you know, in our situation, that's been something that we haven't been able to have as many of. And so it, it is when you're able to – whether it's that or whether it's just – I mean, that was a great catch too. I mean, it was a great ball. It was a great catch in stride. Um, so when you have those – uh, whether it's as a play caller, whether it's as a team, whatever it is, it's a breather and it's 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 rhythm. You know, it's being able to have rhythm. It's not first, second, third, first, second, third, first, second, third. There's chunks, and so now you get a big play. Now you want to be more effective in the red zone. But um, you know, having four plays in that game over 35 yards was good, and that's a start. We know we have that within us. We just got to do it more consistently. Now, when you said that. 
You said that Patrick did a good job when stuff wasn't there. Just wanted to get expand on that. What would you say? Just uh, whether it's taken off and running, there's a few plays where uh, it wasn't there, he took off and run, or if there is a time where there, there is a play that's there or, and he feels fast in the pocket, um, you know, gets off the progression, now it's don't take a, a bad sack, right, a coverage sack, throw the ball away. He had two, they brought two nickel pressures um, to the field in a, in a bunch set, and he's play actioning and turning around, and there's two guys in his face right away. Um, being able to get the ball off and not take an eight to ten yard sack, that's a, that's a smart decision. Um, third and ten plus in the red zone, one of the hardest plays in football. Um, making sure you don't you know, throw into coverage and make a, a play um, where it takes points away, a turnover. You know? And being okay, that was a game where we chipped away. We chipped away with three points, obviously six field goals, but um, he understood that, and I think that it's, uh, it's something that's a, a benefit of his growth, along with Rasheed. Rasheed had a play last week that he grew on from the previous week. When you see that kind of stuff, that's awesome. You love that as a coach. You love it as a player. Last two. Go ahead, Adam. Um, Matt, a uh, little bit different type of season for Pat this year. Mm -hmm. What effect, if any, has, you feel like it's had on him and, and his... I, well, I would say the normal person, you, you might say to affect him more, but um, for Pat, it's, it's all about he just wants to win, and he also knows he's smart enough to understand that every year is different, and with that comes the ability to, to adapt. So when I say that, um, every year, whether it's people, whether it's um, situations, whatever it is, every year is a little bit different. Your identity is a little bit different, not just as an offense, but as a team and how you win. Um, and I think he's, he completely understands that now and is, is understanding that, hey, this might be the type of year where, um, just like we said, decision-making wise, we're smart with, with what we do. We don't turn the ball over. We have an exceptional defense um, that is, is keeping teams out of the end zone uh, and doing really good things. So let's play complimentary football. We're so used to the 40, 45 points at will all the time, and that's the goal. But we also have to understand through the course of a season how we're going to win. Coach, kind of along that front about understanding how you're going to win. I mean, we understanding every player is unique and their own, you know, individual. But we hear a lot of coaches say, "Well, he's a young guy. He's a young guy." Well, they're young guys, but you only have four years of control, mm -hmm. so you got to get something out of them, right? You can't take seven years to develop a guy. Sure. So you get to a point is now, or was the Cincinnati game? It's, it's all about the postseason to where, okay, we've been trying to grow this guy to do all these things that we want to be a 40, 45 point team, but now we got to acknowledge we're going to be a 27 point team. We got Is that what we saw last week with the kind of scale back? And Maybe a little bit, and, and uh, that's the identity part, how you're going to win. Um, we never want to change our goal of scoring a lot of points, and whether it's, whether it's being great on third down or you know, great in the red zone, protecting the football. When you do that, um, there might not be as many explosives, but you find a way to score 30. Um, however it, it goes on, we just want to play complimentary football, and we know that going into the playoffs, um, that it doesn't matter how you win, if you win, everybody will be happy. So we want to do our job on offense to use this entire uh, season of how we played to help us and callous us to be better um, in the playoffs to win it, win it all and do as best as we can. Thank you. Okay, take care.